another morning. It's about eight o'clock now. I'm just pulling into work. Um, I'm thinking when I get home later on, I'm gonna get to doing something, something on the car. I know a couple packages came in, a couple packages that are waiting for me to open them, waiting for me to share them with you. And yeah, just uh. Not sure where my goal, but I'll think about it and see what's, you know, what makes sense on attacking next. So we'll see later on. You know what I'm saying? But uh, just pulling into work. See the garage opening for me. Uh, yeah, we're going to see what's up. <sighs> Front row just came in. Kind of got, is it the same as the back? Uh, kind of the same, but not the same. I know they ain't the best. You know, people have their 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 negatives towards the cross drill and slotted. But this is something I thought I'd pick up. I didn't show y'all what I got. So, I picked up Willwoods. You know what I'm saying? Just made sense. They fit everything I want. They fit the wheels I'm getting. And right after that, send them out to powder coating. So they're already back. Powder coated looking fresh. You know what I'm saying? So my peeps over at Rice Rocket hooked it up nice. Like, as always, you know what I'm saying? They don't miss. So we got everything powder coated to match what I got the Brembo's in. And. Yeah, so I started the rebuild process because I took these apart myself, you know, just to make it easier on them. So I'm putting them back together. These pistons are already in. These have no pistons in them. Um, so these ones are already pressed in and I stopped to show you guys, you know, say what I'm doing. So, so I ended up running out, running out and getting the decals for the real woods and I put them completely back together. So they're all done now. Here we go. Yeah, so I mocked up the wheel wood on there. You know what I'm saying? You wanna see how it is with the line on there? So I'm gonna just do some silicone in here to make sure that it slides good. And I might throw the pads in and see everything clears. So the cars are good. Like, I ain't gonna tell you. More than three feet off the ground right now. So right here, it's because I'm doing the brake lines. So, got home, I decided I'm gonna go to work. So, this this one's running straight to passenger side, and then the opposite from that one, sorry, opposite from that one runs to the driver's side, and then this is driver's side rear, passenger side rear, to the master cylinder there, and the other one is to the master, which one, where does it go? This one, to the master cylinder, comes around in there. Um, obviously, it's gonna be fastened down better than that. I'm just running the routes to see how I want it. And I, I think that's pretty much how I want it, so it's not like everywhere. I'm trying to keep it so the lines are flowing. Lines are flowing and not kinked in any way, right? Put the rear calipers on to see that it gets to where it needs to be. Um, underneath, you'll see the line. The line's hanging right here. But I know from the length of it that it will, always, it will already get to where it needs to be. And the passion was all, all obviously longer because it's supposed to come around that side. But um, I'm not I'm not running them on the same. Well, I don't know if I'm gonna do it yet, but I'm not running them on the same side. Basically, like side by side, I'm running them in the route that they're going. Uh, so I have the driver one coming down the driver's side. And it's gonna go back, and then I have the passenger one coming down the passenger side and it's gonna go back and probably tucked on here. Same with this tucked on here, right? This is where I ran my um, my cables. 
um, has a little rubber. I don't know if you can see that little rubber um, seal there. Slightly on there, but it's still on there. Um, which is just where it made sense for me to run it, I think. Um, I know guys usually run it probably like up there on the firewall and they have a little bracket and shit, but I see some guys that don't do it and they say you don't need it, so. You know, I just said whatever. Um, yeah, I haven't looked in this car in a while, so. It's kind of, you know, interesting to see under here. That it's still good and intact and everything. Some spots were getting touched when I had it under here. So I just probably want to look to make sure that's okay. Like even here, you know what I'm saying? But that's still black, so it's not even nothing. And yeah. Yep. I ain't even mad at this. Uh, yeah, so like I said, brake lines. This is the passenger one going down. And I think that's how I'm gonna run it. Pretty sure it should be able to be fine running like that. No problem at all. But uh, we will see. Uh, let me get from under here. So yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's where we at with the car. I'm gonna get going with that because a lot of the stuff I'm not trying to just record as I'm doing it. I'm just trying to kind of crunch stuff out. Cause uh, When you're recording and trying to work at the same time, it kind of gets in between. It gets in, it gets, it gets in the way, you know. So I realized that a lot of times I'm working on it, I just get get to it, get to it, get to it, get to it. And I just do track of time and working. So I don't, I'm not really trying to turn into a D, DIY kind of thing. But uh, a lot of the work I'm trying to get to. So I probably won't show everything along the way because I'm trying to get to the engine portion to really catch interest on everybody, you know what I'm saying? So once the engine's getting in there and um, it's time to mount it, like put the mounts in the hash boards and get the engine in there, it's probably when I'll start recording step by step. Maybe not even, right? You know, because we, we all know we just want to drive our, we just want to drive our cars, you know what I'm saying? So. I'm just trying to stay focused more on the work so I can get to driving this thing, you know what I'm saying? Like, it needs to drive, really, it needs to drive, so. Yeah, that's where we at right now. Yeah, so, <clears throat> as I was in here, <sighs> going over the brake lines and stuff, I thought to myself, you know what? Let me get the clutch line. That goes to the clutch master, right? Well, that's a clutch master there, and then there's another clutch master, I guess. I don't know if that's what you call it, but another clutch master on the, on the motor. So I went to that in my pile of parts, and I was like, you want me to get the steel line? I had the steel original line on it, but I just didn't like how it looked. So that, that was a couple days ago, and I actually, that was like a day or two ago, actually. Maybe, maybe, even, yeah, like, maybe that, like, or something like that. So I took it out. So the lines off, I just cut them from here until I'm ready to remove these of all of them. And I went out and I ordered on. I said, let me check on Valex. Just came in and I said, yo, let me see what they got anything. And I'm gonna show you guys exactly what it is right now. Like, let me see if I can open this with one hand. Yeah, they sent it in a true heart box, but that ain't nothing. That's soft. So I went on Valex and I said, you know what, let me see if they have anything that I could use. Alright. And luckily, they have a kit for Clutch Master, braided clutch line for Civics with a K-Series swap in it. I don't know if whoever doesn't know this already that I'm doing a K in this car so yeah got the matching uh brake line i'm sorry the matching clutch line for this to complete what the rest of the stuff that i have so you know i just thought that it only made sense and this was cheap this was only like i think 
30, 30 something dollars on the site. And then, you know, you gotta pay your shipping and whatnot, but yeah. So I'm probably gonna fit this and see how it looks on real quick. I'm not sure if it goes probably like that on that side. That's a nice little design they have too, because you see they give it like a like a break. Um, they have like a the caliper fitting on the end of it. I think it's like a bad, sorry, banjo fitting on it. So it has a banjo head on it. All right, so just finished putting the seals on, fasten them up, clean them up. I'm thinking if there's a way that I can lubricate them so they don't get dried up, but I'll probably have to read up on that. Let me give you guys a little view of how they look. <laughs> I know. Came over to my brother in law's house. Let's see the next gem that we got. Just chilling. Things just chilling. No mind the wheel, I took off the other ones, but this is a GSR tech that we bought maybe almost a year now. Maybe almost a year now. Uh, we're gonna try and get it running, get it up. Um, so how I got it was parked, seen it for a while, parked, and, um, the guy just didn't really, um, I guess it didn't look like it moved for a while, so I left a note on it saying, you know what, if you want to sell it, holler at me, man contacted me, and, you know, long story short, we got it, um, got it for a good price, but, um, he never noticed that it got robbed from the spot that it was that it was sitting. So when I started looking at it, I noticed I was missing a couple stuff. So then he realized. I'm like, yeah, man, they did. So you know, it has a couple goodies in there. You know, Skunk Two Shifter, Type R, uh, um, Cluster. It's an original GSR sunroof, everything, carbon cap. It had a fuel setup on it, but that's what they took off of it. So I ended up having to get the stock bar back. Um, they took the ECU out of it, but I ended up getting a B18C Type R ECU to run it for now, at least until it gets uh, chipped. Or well, it should be able to run it fine, actually, but yeah. And yeah. So we're looking to get this thing up. It has braided brake lines, and yeah, this car has been sitting for years, not moved. And that's from the previous owner. We've had it for about uh, just under a year, I would say. Maybe six, seven months. And yeah.